Welcome to this video. Today we'll talk about data types and we'll do practical examples of data type. Last time we spoke there are a number of data types. The first one is uh, numbers. We all use numbers in our daily life and we will talk about how these numbers can be used in programming and in Python. The other one is text or string uh, in uh, Python programming. And the third one is made of those two primitive or fundamental data types, what we call it object. And there are many. There are list data types, there are dictionary data types, and later in the unit two, you will find something called uh, uh, data frame, which we will deal with it to help us do so many things. In this video, I will focus on numbers. So numbers, there are many types of numbers, as you know. If I want to count how many students in a classroom, how many of you listening to me at the moment, I will say maybe 10, 100, whatever number. But I will not say 20.5 because number of people is counted as a whole number. And in programming, we call it integer. There are other data type of numbers. Float. Float is the one that had the decimal point. If you look at the price of milk in a um, supermarket, it's something like 10.5 or 10.99 or something like that. So it has a decimal point. So how we can do this into programming? With numbers comes calculations and using you know you know there are different types of calculation arithmetic uh, operation which you add subtract divide multiply uh, take the uh, expon expo exponential or um, do modules we will look at these things practically so you understand what does it mean and how to apply it Uh, Ali spoke to you last time about variables, and he said to name a variable, in summary, you need to use text, numbers, and if you need, you can use underscore. You cannot use something else like special characters, dollar sign, divide, multiply, all those things will not work because they mean uh, something to, to Python programming. So focus on text numbers, and underscore. You cannot start by a number. And that's something he spoke about, and he gave you examples of uh, correct and wrong data uh, variables. Okay? So let's now assume we have two variables. One, we call it x, and it is 100. And one, we call it y equal 200. Today we'll be using some text, so we'll enter some data and we will see the outcome using print. Uh, again, this is not new to you. If you looked at uh, practical seven, if I remember, which Ali did, you will see that he used input and he used print. But we need to focus more on uh, arithmetic calculation of those numbers. So if you want to add the two numbers together, I can say another variable. Let's make this one y, so I can be happy with it. I like x and y. And this will, we can call it anything, by the way. You know that. You can call it any, a, b, c, d, whatever you want. So z will add the two numbers together. So x plus y. And then one thing here with Python, if you put y, and you do hit enter, you will get uh, the first one came here. So you just add the space and hit enter. So to avoid having a situation like this, yeah? Okay, now let's say what is the result. We use print and we can say Z, okay? So outcome, we will come here. So the outcome is 300, okay? If we want this outcome to look a little bit nice, we can add quotation here, comma, and 
inside the quotation, we can say z equal. Okay? Notice, anything in between quotation, Python will just display it as it is. It doesn't care if it's written correctly or wrong. It's a message that needs to be displayed on the screen. So you look at the outcome, you will get now z equal 300. Okay? Now, defining numbers, and look at this. This is interesting now to understand difference between, between integer and float. If I say z now, again, equal x divided by y. We know this uh, symbol here uh, is, is for dividing, okay? And just display the result. Basically, I can copy this one and just add it here. What do you think the result will be? of 100 divided by 200. I think you will say it's 0 0.5, yeah? Let's see what will come. Will come zero. Why it came zero? Because it treated this one as integer, whole number, divided by a whole number. What is the answer in whole number? There's no, no whole number here, it's decimal point. So it's returning zero because 100 divided by 200, it's 0 0.5, so there is no whole number, so it's zero, yeah? But if this one is 300, for example, and you run it, you will find one. 300 divided by 200 is 1.5, isn't it? It's not 200. If it's 200 divided by 200, will be one. So why there is no 0 0.5 here? The reason is, we dividing integer by integer, the outcome will be integer, yeah? Here, the outcome will be integer. If I want this one to be float, then there are two options I can do. One is add point zero, which doesn't make any change to the value, and another point zero, which does not make any change to the value, and then run. What do you see now? We have 1.5. Now, it treated this one as a float, is a number with a decimal point, and treated this one as a float with a number and decimal point. So z, z here became a float, okay? And that's something maybe you can um, now understand, and I hope you will not get into that, that mistake. If you divide integer by integer, uh, you will get the whole number. But the whole number, if there's a decimal point, it will ignore it. Now, if you want to make it a float, you just simply add 0 0.5 here. That's one, one solution. There is another solution if you want to do, if you don't like this one, you can convert x to float. So you say x float, and you did this one again with Ali. x float x. Now, that integer x became now float x. And you can say y equal float y. This in programming, we call it casting. So you convert from one data type to another data type. And this way, if you do that, you will get uh, the correct answer 1.5. And that's another way, yeah, to, to do it. So now you understand that you, you divide integer by integer, you get integer. So we saw the division. What's about the other one, which the Multiplication, you, you guess it now. X equal, or Z equal X, multiply Y, okay? And I would come, if I just copy this line, put it here, you will have now a new line, which will give us the multiplication. If you multiply 300 by 200, you will be getting X. Okay, now, there's one, uh, special, there's one, okay, so there is one special um, uh, uh, operator, sorry, or um, uh, way of uh, doing some arithmetic. It's if you want to get, you divide numbers, but you need to get only the re reminder, okay? Remember, when you say 300, 300, divided by 200 is the answer 1.5, yeah? But if you 
do it mathematically, you will find the answer is one, and the remaining of that calculation is 100 divided by 200, which is 0.5, okay? So the remaining is 100. So 300 divided by 200, you get one, and remain 100 that you cannot divide, yeah? So how you do that, there's something called module. So I say Z equal X percentage Y. This one find for me the remaining value that if you divide x by y, what is the whole number will come from that and how much will remain? Now don't confuse it with 0 0.5, yeah? 300 divided by 200 is 1.5. So you say the whole number is one, the remaining 0.5. No, the remaining is 100 divided by 200. So with the 100, the remaining is 100 of that division. So that's why you will get 100. So we look at here. And we say, show us the result. We'll come here, 100. So 300 divided by 200, it's actually 200 divided by 200, which give you 1 plus 100 that you will not divide. So when you divide 300 by 200, you take the numbers that you can divide and give you a whole number, and the remaining will come from this formula. This one is very useful, you will notice later. It, I know it's a little bit confusing maybe, but later you will find it very useful when we come to the if statement. I'll give you an idea. If you want to know if a number is even number or odd number, you know the even numbers, which two, four, six, eight, those even numbers, if you divide, the, divide them by two, you get always a whole number and you get nothing remaining, okay? So if you define any number by two and you get the remaining is zero, that number is an even number. So later we'll use F statement. We'll say F X divided by two or X module two equal, uh, equal zero, that's an even number, okay? Clear. Now what else we have? The exponent. Okay, let's look at this. In mathematics, you say, if you want to say uh, x to the power two, okay? So how you do it? Star, star, two. So this gives you x to the power two. So if we take 300 and multiply it, multiply it by 300, you will get what? Three by three, nine, 90,000. Uh, so this is the way to the power two. Okay, because we're multiplying uh, it by itself. Uh, but if you put three, it will be 300, multiply 300, multiply 300. If you put four, then now you guess it and you understand. Okay, so we didn't print the result. So we'll come here and say print. Okay, so you will get now 90 uh, thousands. So you understand this now. There's one more I would like to explain, which the opposite to, to the module, yeah? This is the opposite to the module. Means with the module, you divide a number by a num number and get the remaining uh, value from that uh, division, okay? But this one, if you divide number by number, you get only the whole number, okay? and the remaining would not be into your calculation. So how you do that, this is the way to do it. We'll say Z again equal X divide divide Y. See, two, two div times of dividing. And you get the result. You will now see what will be that result. So the, the whole number you will get by dividing 300 by 200, you will get one. And the remaining is you, you just uh, leave it. So now, to recap, and I uh, hope uh, um, you get it. Seems that I just lost what I created uh, by clicking somewhere, but I hope this is the one. Yeah. 
here is the one. So recap what numbers, if you have integers or float, you can easily add them together by using plus, okay? And you get the result. You can divide the numbers, you can multiply, and you can get the module, which give you the remaining value that is not divided. And then this is the to the power 2 to the power, you can say x to the power y. This will be a huge value because it will multiply 300 by itself 200 times. 300, 300, so it's a huge number. Um, you will look at that and we'll see how it will come. That's, that's one. And then you have, um, when you want to get only the remaining value, sorry, the whole value, you don't want to get the remaining, so you can use divide, divide, and that will get you uh, that value. Let's run again and see what we will get. We'll have a big error here because the number out of range. This is huge number, so that means we need to look now at a way to using a long number. So the integer has a limit, has a limit. Now, if you want to get that limit and you want to be someone who experiment with, with the programming, you can try here and start saying, this is divided by 150 only, and you see what will come. Oh, it's a big value. So let's try divided by 50 now. So 50, oh, 50 is working. So give us this huge number, seven to the power 100 to 10, to 10 to the power 1, 2, 3. So it's 7 with 1, 2, 3 zeros to the, to the right. Now you can start play with this one and say, oh, I'll go 100. Does it take 100? And this is accepts 100 until you find where is the limit of an integer. And I want you to do that uh, exercise. Go and find what is the limit of the integer. How many zeros or uh, or, or uh, digits uh, an integer number can, can hold. You need to find it. The solution is to move to something higher called long. Long is longer than the integer. So where you find the size of the integer in Python and find the uh, size of uh, the maximum digits uh, and long number can take. We'll stop here, and the next video, we'll talk about more things. So we have done uh, today, or in this video, some arithmetic uh, calculation by dividing, multiplying, adding, subtract. You understand it, I think. Uh, just use minus instead of plus. And we have seen uh, uh, there is a limit to the integer uh, numbers. And we seen also how we convert from integer to float, and what the difference between float and integer. So float basically take uh, the small point. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video and you find it useful.